Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I am Billy Embody. Thanks for listening. Pleased to be joined by SMU women's basketball coach Toyel Wilson. Coach, thanks so much for the time. How are you? Good, good. Just, you know, getting uh, this postseason started and um, getting the girls back on the court and back um, in the weight room and uh, trying to start the new season, our new journey now. And, and you know, this this season, a, a big step forward, getting into the WNIT and, and going to the second round. Take us through the second season for you. What was it like? Um, just, you know, it was an added uh, excitement, uh, especially everything that we had did uh, last season and accomplished last season. And so um, we were really coming into this season as far as um, more experience, um, more talent, um, and just wanted to be successful and show and showcase that uh, game in and game out. And I thought I set ourselves up for a competitive preseason um, slate, and, and that went really well for us. Uh, you know, you take over, and, and obviously it's got to be an adjustment that first year. How much more comfortable were you in the second year and, and just overall knowing where you were, what you had, and, and all of those things? Yeah, I think experience played a big factor in that. That's what made me a little more comfortable. But um, the one other thing is a lot of teams already knew who you were after one year. They kind of didn't think of you as just coming in to play you. They're like, okay, there's a target on your back now. Um, but we had that experience coming back in Jasmine Smith and Savannah Wilkinson and, and added a few other pieces. And so it was really um, fun to come into the season uh, with what we knew we had. Um, and, you know, Couple players that you are going to have returning, a couple keys, TK Pitts and, and Shante Embry in the front court, um, or, or in the front court with uh, Shante and, and TK at, at guard. What are you looking for out of them, and and what have you seen from them over their development? Well, you know, Reagan Bradley's coming back for her fifth year, so that's going to be nice to have a point guard, a leader, um, someone that knows the system to come back um, next season. Um, but also, you know, the freshies and the, and the young kids the Jaya and the TKs and the Ella Brown. I mean, Ella started a few games while Jazz was injured. So Ella really has that experience. Reagan has that experience. Tamia will be back. Um, the freshmen will just be trying to get a little more of their feet wet a little bit more. Um, with Shantae, you know, we'll have Amir Abdul-Rahim back. We'll have Jessica Peterson back. So we have a little bit of every, everything. I think it's going to be more of a team that's um, an overall team. It's not going to be like one player, come, somebody can come and scout. It has to be an overall good team. We see, you know, a lot of veteran teams make runs that those pieces returning and just that familiarity with with you guys, with the coaches and your systems. How much does that change kind of your expectations now going into the offseason and, and, you know, building on uh, what you guys have already done? Yeah, well, our expectations are still high. I, I tell the kids we're not re rebuilding, we're reloading. And so someone else has to step their game up. And that's the big thing and the joy of this is seeing who actually can step their game up in the offseason and really help their team and, and be counted on during the season. Um, speaking of reloading and, and, and you know, retooling, you know, through the transfer portal, you did add uh, a couple of players uh, that I saw, Tiara Young and Maya Ch Chandler. Um, break those break those players down for us, those young ladies uh, joining the program and what they're going to bring. Both have a lot of starting experience. Yeah, Maya Chandler is going to be a great player. She's um, from Indiana, but she went to Loyola Chicago. And one thing at Michigan, I was there, we recruited a lot of Indiana kids. It was the birthplace of basketball. Uh, she knows the game she's been playing since she's four years old. If you're not playing basketball four years old, there's something up with that, you know. Um, but she's a great competitor. Uh, she can shoot the ball. We were looking for some outside scoring. She can score off a ball screen. She can create her own shot. Um, she can score at all three levels. I like that about Maya. So I'm really excited about having an Indiana kid and the toughness of a kid like that to come in our program. Um, Tiara Young is uh, obviously, y'all know she was sixth player of the year at U of H in our conference. And uh, she's going to come and, and really be able to score the ball. She has a mid-range killer. She can um, defend. She can she can score it. So adding that piece is going to be really really nice. And again, I think I told our girls that we're adding sauce to the to the, to the program. It's like you got to step up every day in practice to be able to compete against each other, and make each other better. Uh, how is the transfer portal process playing out in women's basketball? Is it is it as insane as what the men's is? And and how you know being in Dallas. You pitched, I assume, a lot of the same traits that SMU has to offer. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, the portal's like another whole recruiting season now. Um, you think that you're done recruiting in November when you saw your kids early, but um, now there's another season in that in April. So um, 
it, it goes from the best players to the to the bottom of the kids that don't play. And so it's really about fit, feel. I really think it's about the relationship you have with kids at the end of the year for them to really evaluate what, how, them staying at a school or not. A um, couple of high school signees as well. You continue to recruit at a high level at SMU. Break down your pair of uh, 2023 additions. Yeah, Aaliyah Henderson um, from Norman, Oklahoma. I mean, she went to the same school that Shantae went to, and um, she's a winner. They, they're they state champions. They, she knows what it takes. She's a, a, a pest on the court. She's gritty. She's a competitor. Um, she's a lefty. I love lefties. Um, I've coached a few of them, Alexis Jones, Odyssey Sims. Um, but I love me a lefty. Um, I'm left-handed. Um, and I think that mixes up just a little bit on, on the court, mixes up a little bit. She can defend. She'll pick you up 94 feet. So that's going to help with our pressing that we do throughout the year. Um, so I'm really excited about her. Um, and Chanel Reed out of Austin. Um, she has a twin sister that's going to uh, UTA. Um, so we're going to try and get that game on on so we can play each other. But Chanel is smooth. She she reminds me of who we had last year, Sydney Wiggins. Smooth, silky. Um, doesn't get out of her element, can shoot the ball. She's long. She's about six, six, one, a guard. And so she's really going to, she's going to be able to come in here and um, stroke the ball a little bit, but she can play multiple positions. So I'm really excited about her. Uh, I think our listeners might not know this, but women's basketball does have 15 scholarships to give. Uh, When you assemble a roster, what is it like navigating, obviously the portal, the high school ranks, and is there, any other uh, pieces that you're kind of looking to looking to add over the off season? No, just, you know, the camaraderie, that chemistry is going to be a big part of it because you're going to have freshmen returners transfers. And the big thing is going to be how they gel together, um, play off each other's strengths and weaknesses. Um, we don't recruit two of the same type of people. So um, they're really going to learn each other and learn how to respond to different things and to get their roles and accepting their roles and what we need from them. When you came to SMU, what has been the biggest change from then to now, either with yourself or how your program is, is structured? What's been some of the changes that that you've been able to really feel good about so far? I would say definitely the culture was the biggest thing for me. The team chemistry and the culture was the biggest things, the aspects I feel that you have to get um, down immediately and trusting the coaches and the coaching staff and the players trusting us. And so we did a lot of team bonding stuff. We did a lot of things with, with the team and um, really to help them trust us and and know our personalities and us learn them. I always say a kid doesn't care how much you know till they know how much you care. And if you get to know who a kid is as a person, I think they really, really trust you on the court. So we really pride ourselves in that relationship piece that we have with our kids. And that's what we first did. And now we have that. And now they're trusting us with what we're telling them on the court um, and combining that. And now you're just every year doing that over and over. And so really excited about that and um, excited about what we can do again next year. What is kind of your philosophy on on scheduling? And and you mentioned you know that step up in non conference uh, earlier um, in the in the podcast. But what what's you know kind of looking ahead to this upcoming year? Are you taking it up another notch if you can? Yeah, I mean scheduling is important. Um, we have to go by the net now, and so the net is you have to require to do certain um, games in certain areas. So you only can have one team from the bottom. You only can have two teams from the middle area, three teams, you know, so it's very, very strategic so that you're setting yourself up for, um, a good situation for the postseason and, and to be picked for the WNITs and to be picked in, um, postseason tournaments. And so it's really important that we follow that, that, um, kind of format and, um, set ourselves up. We did it this year. We'll be in Cal on the road, beating Gardner Webb, um, playing at Baylor, losing by three, playing at OU, um, just being competitive. And so um, that's just the big thing is just that you follow in that net and to put yourself in a situation to be successful at the end of the year. And, and with a lot of the returning pieces you have, do you put more on the players as far as, you know, taking ownership? And I know, I know it's entering year three now. It's a little different in that respect. But how much have you seen some of these players kind of take on that leadership role? And, and who are the ones that you've really leaned on through the through the time here? Yeah, I would say like the leadership comes from the people that experience and not so always, though, just the seniors or the people that score the most, but the ones that really show that leadership on and off the court. Um, you know, Reagan Bradley's, um, Tamia Jones. And from there, you just got to kind of find who else is leading the pack. Um, again, both the want to and the will to, but not just want that that role of leadership, but also showing and displaying that every day. Have you undergone any 
tweak schematically throughout your time here as far as you know how you guys do things and uh, on the court is there anything that you you've kind of identified said well that wasn't maybe what i expected or how it panned out the the way i wanted it to what have you kind of tweaked and, and worked on in that respect no just the real thing is like the conditioning i think we can press a little bit more with this team um but you know the big thing is just executing um on both sides of the ball like defensively executing knowing our slides knowing our rotations um, and then offensively, just different things with the continuity offense, but also with um, our sets and, and with our mismatches. And so, you know, the, the the big thing is the IQ of the girls have to be great in order to make little tweaks and things like that. You have to have a basketball IQ. And so we teach them that at the end of practice for the wins and different things that we do when we play. So right now they're just doing individuals, lifting, um, playing some pickup, three on three, four on four, five on five, and then. Um, it gets busy again June 1st when we get back to the nitty-gritty real stuff. The Final Four was in Dallas and uh, obviously one that uh, got plenty of buzz uh, just around the country. First of all, that it's got to be terrific for just women's basketball in general, having that many eyes on the sport the way it did, especially you know compared to the national championship game on the men's side. What what have you seen from women's basketball as far as you know continuing to build and and really probably coming off one of its best years just overall? Yeah, I think it was in a great city and here in Dallas. It was nice weather. It was um, a great venue, great I mean, culture. Everything around here in Dallas is great. But, um, you know, with the teams and how at the end of the year, March Madness is when you never can predict who can get to the to the championship. And so I think that buzz was great. I think on the men's side, it was like the lower seeds. And that was kind of, I think, the, the non-attraction to that. But um, just the, the with the Caitlin Clarks and the Angel Reese's and um, the fiery different um, – players on each team it, it was intriguing to people who don't even watch basketball and so I think it was great for the sport great for our women's basketball and um, great for for people to kind of lock in that, that, that wouldn't routinely look at it with it being in Dallas did some of your ladies take additional notice and kind of you know you see a little bit more fire to get that that level because it wasn't it right in your backyard yeah I think so I think they watched it I think they were in tune to it I think they get, went to the practices the open practices and um so it's right here it's only five, seven miles down the road five miles down the road so really accessible um able to watch practices see engage in other people downtown um so it was great for our city and for our university um, you, you did work with with Kim Mulkey for Kim Mulkey. I mean, what was that like? And and what did you pick up from her during your time in, in Waco? Um, you know, won a national championship in 2019 and was there for six years just learning, um, demanding the most out of kids, demanding the most out of everybody that you work with um, and really, you know, pushing that intensity level and bringing your best when your best is needed every day. And so um, I'm grateful to have been able to coach under a lot of great coaches in my life, Cynthia Cooper. Um, also Kim Barnes and Rico at Michigan. And so they're all going to be Hall of Fame coaches one day. And so I'm just blessed to be able to learn and grow and put a little sauce to whatever I want to do here at SMU. You know, to, to take the next step as the program and get into the tournament, what are a couple of the keys that you look at going into next year and say, we've got to accomplish this and, and step up in, in that regard? Yeah, I think the first thing is you got to stay healthy. <laughs> we had a couple of injuries this year. We weren't healthy. We had people out for six games, another person out for six games, and then two people out. So we didn't have that consistency. But I think, you know, everyone has to step their game up, um, and including the coaches and, and the players, and be ready to go to war every day. I think our we played really well at home, 12-2, and two, and then away we were that as the total opposite, that bad. So just being able to play four quarters, 40 minutes of focused basketball on the road, we got to get better on the road as a road team. We don't know what's going to happen down the line with some of this conference stuff, but the the buzz around where SMU stands and all that regard is is pretty strong. Have you noticed anything in terms of you know how the program is received or anything like that around around town or with recruits and things like that? Well, we only we mention to them what we think. The only thing we know is that they're considering us, but we don't know anything. But um, I only I always say control the controllables, and we got to do what we got to do. And if that time to cross that bridge, we will do it, and then. Obviously, the recruiting goes to a different level and all that. But right now, we're just recruiting how we do and um, recruit the players for our system, for our program, for our conference um, to win a, a conference championship. What are the keys for you when when evaluating, you know, obviously, players, talent, character, all of those things? And, you know, how have you guys been able to be so successful at it? Yeah, just just watch the, the birth, best kid character wise, um, the best kid that we're looking for, what to do in their role. 
um, the best kid of being a good teammate. It's not necessarily the best player, but the best overall teammate, the best, the kid that loves academics and committed to academics, just like they are on the court. Um, so it's a totality of things that we look for. Um, athleticism, being able to guard on both on the defensive end and being able to score, but also um, how you are when you're having a bad game. I watch that a lot. Um, how do you interact with your teammates? Um, touches, you know, high fives, slaps, all that kind of stuff. So we, the totality of a teammate. Um, finally, I mean, just as you you sit back and look at you know your last two years, how much do you self reflect uh, on on things, or do you you know very much look forward to the future and and kind of how do you weigh you know that that kind of line as a coach? You want you're you're always in the kind of the race of everything going on from portal to practice to weights and all of that. I mean, how do you weigh all of that and just try to continue to improve? Yeah, just that's the thing. It's always going on this trajectory going up and, um, you know, just basically knowing you belong where you are and um, know you belong and give yourself grace, but continue to uh, help the people around you and keep your circle tight and, and grow the people around you, grow your team. And all you can do is compare yourself to what you did last year, the year before, not to anybody else. And so staying true to yourself and what you do and knowing that you belong. Well, Coach, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. We'll have to do it again soon uh, when the when season gets closer and you get a yeah. better grip on who you have coming all together now. Yeah, for sure. Anytime. Um, I appreciate it. And uh, pony up. Thanks so much, Coach, for joining us. And we appreciate all you guys listening to our interview with Coach Wilson on the On the Pony Express podcast. We will catch you guys with another edition of the podcast later this week. Thank you so much for listening, and we will catch you guys next time.